This, quite frankly, is the best Neapolitan pizza you're ever going to make at home. Let's get started. Hi everybody, welcome to the channel and today let's make a beautiful Neapolitan pizza. If you're new to the channel, welcome. They call me Maple Cook around here. And if you're not new to the channel, you know that I'm half Italian and I'm really proud of being able to make some really good and authentic Italian dishes. Hold on, hold on. Since when are you half Italian? Well, do you want me to prove it? <laughs> Go ahead, say something in Italian for me. Okay, fine. Ciao ragazzi, benvenuti sul mio canale. Oggi vorrei insegnarvi come fare una bella pizza napoletana in casa senza forno speciale. Good enough for ya? Yeah, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> all right, let's make some beautiful pizza. Let's do it. So did you understand any of that? Nope, not at all. <laughs> you know, I actually studied the Italian language so I could be a better Italian cook. Really? Yeah, because you always lose something in translation, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I didn't want to rely on an English translation. So what you're getting today is from Italian. Nice. Before we start making our dough, I just want to say something. First of all, Italy's capital of pizza is Napoli, if you didn't know that already. And I studied the Napoli playbook backwards and forwards, inside and out. I know all the rules. I think there's a difference between somebody who doesn't know what they're doing and they're trying to teach something they're not familiar with on the internet versus somebody like me who's actually familiar with all the rules. I know how to do this. But the thing about the rules in Napoli is that it's made for the professional kitchen. And there are certain limitations in the home kitchen that I gotta break the rules to make it work. What kind of limitations are we talking about? Well, you know, in the professional kitchen, for the, Napoli, the true Napoli pizza, you have to have a wood-fired oven that goes to 900 degrees. Yeah. That'll cost $15,000, even if you want to put one in your house. You have to have room for it. Not yeah. happening, right? <laughs> and to get one of those uni specialized ovens, that's 1300 bucks. Wow. Yeah, like, no. I'm going to do this in a way that anybody could make it at home and get pretty much an authentic result. Let's start by making our impasto, which is our dough. And uh, we're gonna use this flour, okay? It's and from Napoli. It's made by Caputo. It is the most authentic kind of pizza flour you can get. Yeah. Can you use other kinds of flours? You can get away with regular red flour, but you're gonna notice. Yeah. I'll put all the weights and measures in the description down below for those of you who like to read that kind of stuff. Or you can just follow along, okay? So, 520 grams of this flour. And how much would be regulation then? Oh, uh, regulation would be like two to four grams. Two to four grams, yeah. oh, okay. But you let that small amount of yeast grow over three days. Yeah. I'm tripling it, quadrupling it, yeah. because I'm only gonna take an hour to do this. So it speeds up the whole process. It speeds basically. up the process. Okay. I mean, okay. there is a downside to it too, but I've done my experimentation and I found that if you do it the way I'm showing you in this video, you won't even notice. So, 11 grams of this. Whee! From Italy, sea salt. Sea salt, This right. is from Sicilia, Sicily. Okay. 11 grams of this. That's what it looks like. All right. And I'm just gonna use my whisk, whisk it up. Now I could whisk this using the whisking attachment on my stand mixer, but I trust my hand more. I just like having my hands on feeling with it. I'm at this A lot of experience with the hand. I did more than I care to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna set this aside at the stand mixer over there. All right. Okay. Next, let's prepare our water. 420 grams of slightly warmer than room temperature water. Okay. And again, I'm breaking the rules because I'm trying to speed this up. There we go, 420 on the dot. Next, lievito madre, which is sourdough starter. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, we're gonna put 30 grams of this in there. You can use any sourdough starter that you might have. Yeah. And I got this years ago from a pro baker. Sticky mess. Yeah. Some recipes use all sourdough. I'm not doing that today. Again, I'm using a combination of commercial yeast and sourdough for its combined properties. I'm at 28. I'm at 28 on the dial here, but it got some stuck to the spoon. Yeah. So that's that'll be 30 altogether. Okay. Right. And then we just we just mix that up, dissolve it nicely. Okay, come on in here. I want to show you something optional. Okay. 
if you want some really, really concentrated flavor in your sourdough, yeah. you see, you feed it. Like I've, If you want to see how to feed sourdough, I've got another video on how to do that, and I'll put it right there later if you want to see it. But I fed this earlier today, and it poofed up. It's all full of, it's all full of like carbon dioxide bubbles. And what you do at this point is you beat it down. Notice how I'm popping all the bubbles and it's getting flat again? Yeah. Okay, so what happens with sourdough is that the yeast and the bacteria will eat as much car uh, as they'll eat as much carbohydrate as they can and poof it up, but they don't get it all. all right. So when you beat it down like this, it redistributes the position of all the cells and it puts the yeast into contact with new carbohydrate that they didn't get around to eating before. And they get all active again. So you beat it down like that and then you leave it and you let it rise again. And that will concentrate the sourdough flavor. Oh, okay. It'll make it more powerful. Yeah. And you can do that up to about three or four times. Just keep beating until you, you like it. You can just keep beating it. And then you can do what I did, add it to the water, and then you will flavor your whole dough with the sourdough without having to do that three-day fermentation that they do with the pro shops. Yeah. yeah. So that's my way of getting around that. All right. What's this you're drinking today? Oh, I am drinking Peroni, which is an Italian beer. Yeah. Not sponsored, but I gotta say something that a lot of non-Italians don't realize. Italians don't drink wine with pizza. Really? Yeah, it's not an Italian thing. Then how can we see it all the time? Because that's something that foreigners think that Italian people do. Hey. So they sell it. If, if Italians see you drinking wine with pizza, they go, ah, thirst. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Any real Italian will know that's, that's not the way to do it. Interesting. And they want something fizzy. Yeah. Because they call it spumante. And that means it, it interacts and helps digest the pizza better than wine does. Because wine ah. has no bubbles. Okay. So what about little kids? Little kids will drink something like Coca-Cola. Yeah. Maybe sparkling water, something, something that's spumante. Yeah. And wine is, too, unless you're dealing with champagne. Nobody drinks champagne with pizza, come on. <laughs> so we got our dry ingredients ready. Yeah. We got our liquid ready. And it's time to put them together. Okay. I use the dough hook. Some people use a different shape paddle. I find the dough hook. I find the dough hook works best for me. Okay. All right. We're going to start it on low first. Okay. And then what I like to do is add it in shifts around the perimeter of the bowl. Yeah. Just to help distribute the liquid more evenly. Okay. Again, that's not something that you're required to do, but I like to do it. Right now it's a wet mess with a lot of dry parts. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna slowly whoops, I'm gonna slowly increase the speed as fast as I can go without throwing flour. But once I get all the flour in contact with the liquid, yeah. then I'm gonna turn up the speed to max. Nah. Normally this would be about 11 minutes. And I used to time it when I was a novice, but now I've done it so many times that I just watch how the dough looks. I go by the look of the dough. So how should it look like? Okay, right now, okay, you've seen it's picked up all the dry dough now, right? Yeah. Now it's safe to crank it to max. Yeah. And we'll just let it go, and I'll tell you when it's changing. Right now it looks like a shaggy mess. Yeah. Right? Eventually the shaggy mess will turn into like a wet, sticky mess. Okay. I'm sure you've seen many of those before. It'll be going like that for a while. And eventually it will form on the bottom of the bowl a disc that won't go anywhere. Everything else in the bowl will be moving around, but there will be this one disc of sticky stuff at the bottom. My name for that is the placenta, because oh. it reminds me of how a placenta sticks <laughs> to the side of the womb, right? Interesting, okay. And then when you see the placenta tear away, yeah. there will come a point when the dough gains enough body that it starts going flappity, floppity, flappity, flop. You'll hear it too. And once it starts making the flappity sound, you know it's going to tear the placenta away from the bottom soon. Yeah. As soon as the placenta separates from the bottom of the bowl, you're done. Okay. All right. Can you see how it's really flappity flappity now? Oh yeah. And there's nothing stuck at the bottom, you're done. Nice. All right. So while the dough is mixing, yeah. you can use this time to oil your, your pans that you're going to put the dough into. Okay. And I recommend Sicilian olive oil, extra virgin. Uh, all right. This is the good stuff. Just let me say a shout out. I want to say thank you to all the guys. Franco, Alessandro, and Dinsudo. They supply all of my ingredients and they are really, really good with giving me advice too. Okay, for the pizza, we have this farina caputo, tipo doppio zero. It's the classic to use for the pizza. Potentially, you can also mix it with a little bit of semola, remacinata. 
per, per rendere l'impasto un pochettino più saporito. Don't use lower quality olive oil. Everything about a pizza margarita napoletana, it's meant to showcase the beauty of every single ingredient. Okay? If you cheap out, your guests are gonna taste it. Mm. You want something that's you want something that's kind of high sided because the dough's gonna rise. Yeehaw! Yeah! I'm gonna oil my hands. And guess why? Uh, to keep it from sticking, That's I guess. Right. I just don't want this dough sticking in my hand. On purpose, it's an overhydrated dough. Yeah. And what that means is, I went to about 85, 80, 85 percent hydration on this, which is insanely high for pizza. Regulation says maximum 65 percent. What does that mean? That means if you got 100 grams of flour, you got 65 grams of water. That's 65 percent hydration. Uh -huh. And. That is fine for the commercial kitchen. Yeah. At home, the thing is going to be too. It's going to be too stiff, and it won't produce the bubbles you want. Uh, so we don't want stiffness in this thing. No bubbles in pizza napoletana. It has to have a bubbly crust. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. Okay, we're gonna make a dough ball out of this. Roughly portion half of it. Okay. This is such a wet, loose, slack mass. It is. For commercial kitchens, it's not supposed to be like that. Yeah. Chef Vincenzo, Vito Iacopelli, if you're watching this, I know you're gonna be like, you're gonna be like, Che cazzo dici, right? <laughs> but this is what I've noticed that you have to do for the home kitchen, okay? And then you get this ball. Put the ball in like that. Yeah. Okay? Over hydrating the dough like this makes it hard to handle. Okay. Really hard to handle, because it's all sticky and loose. Yeah. If you're a novice, this might be kind of challenging. In which case, in the description, I'm going to leave the novice formula 2 with the 65% hydration. And you can do it that way until you're confident and then move up to the 80, 85 So you, you, you tuck it with your three fingers on each hand yeah. until it becomes like a mozzarella ball. And then you kind of give it a jiggle. And then and you go, Whoa. Okay, now you got it like this. You want to put some olive oil on the top of it so it won't dry out yeah. and it won't stick. Having too much olive oil won't hurt. Not enough, you're gonna have a sticky mess later. Okay? It'll be a sticky situation. It will. It'll suck. I've gone through a lot of suck. That didn't come out right. I... <laughs> <laughs> At all. Oh my gosh. All right. Forgive me. Forgive me. Okay? So now that you got it like this, put a piece of plastic wrap over it so that it won't dry out for sure. It's 527 right now. And we'll set this aside on the countertop for about an hour. One hour. Okay. Hour, hour and a half. It depends on the temperature of your room. Okay. It depends on a lot of things. Humidity in the air. But watch it. Generally speaking, an hour. Yeah. Just watch it. It should double in size. Double in size. Okay. 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 Now that we got the dough rising over there, this is the perfect time to start making our tomato sauce. Okay. And this is what we're using today. What's this? Okay, I gotta say a word about tomatoes. It's really, really important, guys. Yeah. Okay, the very minimum, minimum you should be looking for when you're making Margarita Napolitana is DOP. Okay? What does that mean? It means it was grown in a protected area in Italy, certified for high quality. Oh, okay. That's the very minimum. Okay, yeah. don't just use any willy nilly tomato or you'll ruin the thing. I can't stress this enough. It really matters. Okay, the next step. You have to get this kind. It's called San Marzano. San Marzano. Okay, San Marzano is the strain of tomato. If you don't get San Marzano, it won't taste the same. Okay, so if you have a DOP and it's a San Marzano, you're good. But if you really want to go the whole nine yards, like I really want to go to today, you're going to use a San Marzano that's DOP that's also grown in Lagro uh, Sarnese Nocerino. And that is a specific area near Mount Vesuvius where the soil is known to produce the best tasting tomatoes. Are these the, the people who make the rules? Yeah, according to the Association of Pizza, uh, pizza Rule Makers. That's what it looks like. It's beautiful. Just beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Is that a paste or is it the... No, it's actual whole tomatoes. Oh, see? okay. Oh, I see. And I am doing a step that only the most expensive restaurants in Italy do. According to the rules, you should... You are allowed to have 
the seeds in it, but you're not supposed to grind them up because it will impart a bitterness to the sauce. Okay. But again, I want to be extra, so I am straining it through this mesh, this yeah. wire mesh. And I can tell you from experience, okay? This Remember I talked earlier about like how to choose a tomato? Yeah. Even if you buy, and this is going to be depressing, I'm sorry, but even if you buy DOP, San Marzano, Sanese Noterino, you will find that when you buy the different brands, you'll realize there's different brands' differences. Some will be creamier, like some will be more rich, like in the way they, it comes out of the can. Like this one's very, very rich. Yeah. Some will be watery. Okay. Like the tomatoes, right? But when they packed it, they didn't pack it with enough whatever. So I gave you enough advice to find a good tomato, but really you're gonna have to go out and try. Okay. The safest thing to do is get the stiranese. Yeah. If you go with this one, you can't go wrong. Again, it's like the caputo flower. Right. It's a known brand, they always deliver, so it's safe. Neapolitan sauce is just tomatoes and salt, really. That's it? That's it. You don't put any spices or anything in it. Again, like I said before, this is not a New York. This is not a New York pizza. It's definitely not a, a Pizza Hut pizza or Domino's pizza. There's no five meats, big flavors, boom, pow. None of that. That's the opposite way of how a Neapolitan pizza works. Mm -hmm. The idea with the kind of pizza we're making tonight is that every ingredient is allowed to sing. Yeah, it's allowed to shine on its own like a star in the sky. Mm -hmm. And if you put five meats on it, it's going to be like throwing five suns on it. There's no way you're going to see the stars anymore. Yeah. So that's why these tomatoes are so beautiful in their flavor because of the soil that they came out of. Next to Mount Vesuvius with their vo volcanic nutrients and everything. Yeah. They're fruity and they're sweet. And if you, if you added spices and all kinds of weird things to it, you would cover up that beauty. You'd ruin it. Yeah, you just force it through and you get this beautiful tomato at the at the back end. Okay, remember there's two ingredients in the sauce. Yeah. One is the tomatoes, the yes. other is sea salt. Right. Okay. And this the regulations say between 10 and 12 grams for every kilogram of tomatoes. Yeah. This is about 800 grams of tomatoes. So 5 5.5 6 grams of salt here. Okay. Okay. Get your beautiful Italian salt. And that's it. The salt will bring out the beauty and the sweetness of these tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And we're done. Don't you have to like heat it up or anything? Nope because when you can it, you cook it. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah, it comes out of the can already cooked. What's yeah. the setup you've got going on? Yeah, I have, actually nobody knows this. Long time viewers of the channel know that I have this um, this tile this tile surface that I work on that covers my stove. Yeah. I like it because it's heat proof, but you, you probably didn't know these tiles are from Italy. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. Italian tiles. So in a small, weird way, this is a made in Italy pizza. Yeah. I'm making it on Italian <laughs> soil. <laughs> Full Italian experience. You, to make it non-stick, we're gonna use this. Caputo semola or yeah. semolina. I'm not gonna go into the difference right now between semola and semolina. You can just Google that, but uh, this is the real stuff from Napoli. And you put it on any surface you don't want the pizza to stick to. And you just sprinkle it down. Don't use cornmeal. A lot of Americans use cornmeal, but we're going real Italian, right? It's gotta be semolina. This is going to be very, very difficult to handle. And I am not going to do the turning and the stretching like you normally see. This is far too soft. Okay. Okay? And I did that on purpose because when you make it this soft, you make it have beautiful bubbles. And bubbles is what we want for that really poofy crust, that cornicione, as they say in Italian. Mm -hmm. Or if you're from Napoli, cornicione. And you just do this with your hands and you push. Look how soft that is just wickedly soft. Mm -hmm. See these big bubbles? That's what you want. Okay? Oh, I see. You can turn it. This is so soft. So slack. If you try to flip this like a normal dough, you're going to destroy it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. All you do is just gently spread it out with your fingers like this. Yeah. And turn it maybe. This is why you put all that semolina underneath, right? And we can stretch it and turn it and turn it. Okay, regulation cornicione is going to be between one and two centimeters thick yeah. and bubbled up, and it's supposed to have bubbles in it. It's supposed to have a nice open cell structure, they call it. Now that you got it like this, slap it. What we're doing here is slapping out the air, because by the regulations, the center disc has to be between 2.5 to 3 millimeters. Okay. And if you don't do metric, that's like that thin. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
any thicker and it's a failure. Delicately, pick it up, pull it over. Look how that stretches, okay? So that's like super soft. Yeah, you don't want to put holes in it. Take it to the edge. <laughs> Some people don't mind if the cornicione is teardrop shaped into the disc of the pizza. Mm. Okay, like that. Yeah. I hate that. My personal taste, I like it to be round and then a flat disc. Flat disc. Yeah, the, fl the center disc should be flat in my opinion and then the cornicione should be like poofy and like the edge should be separate. Oh, okay. So if you want that kind of edge, you do this. Okay, grab it like this, stretch it, and then just kind of fold it over. Oh, I see. Okay. And that will produce that beautiful, well-defined edge right there and yeah. then your sauce won't right when you oh, apply yeah, the yeah. sauce and so that's stay all in place. yeah stretch fold stretch fold that one's ready to put in the oven cool we're only going to take it to 450. 450. yeah okay. and that's half the heat there's no way it's going to cook in 90 seconds so we're going to have to par bake it okay meaning we're going to have to bake it for six minutes first oh, okay okay and there's just no other way around it so we're going to apply some olive oil to the outside like this. Is this breaking the rules too? This is not normal, but um, Vito Jacopelli does recommend it for home making. Okay. Even though he and I don't make pizzas the same way, it is something that I, he acknowledges and I do too. They're not done yet, they're only to this point, but that's where they're supposed to be. One. Look at that beautiful red, eh? Mm -hmm. Two. And a little bit more. And then in a circular motion, Spread it out to the edge. And you see why I curled it over? So that the sauce has a little a little border to run into. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And you won't get any on the actual crust. According to the regulation, you're allowed two kinds of cheese. One is mozzarella di bufala, which is buffalo milk mozzarella. Yeah. Or cow's milk fior di latte. And the thing is, you're supposed to cut them differently. If you have mozzarella di bufala, you're supposed to cut it into discs or half moons. And fior di latte is supposed to be cut into French fry shapes, the strips. Mm -hmm. And so you can even tell just by looking at it what kind that they have. Oh, okay. okay. For me, I'm going to break a rule here just because aesthetically, to me, it's more pleasing to my eye just to pinch it off. Yeah. And you'll see what I mean, okay? Real Italian fior di latte. Okay? It's got a jiggle to it. Yeah, oh yeah. It's a soft, it's a soft cheese. I like to just pinch it and put it on there. Okay? And a lot of people don't realize that with real Italian pizza, you're not supposed to burn the cheese. Why not? That's just not the way it's done. The ideal Italian pizza, the cheese is melted, and that's it. It's a little bubbly. You never are supposed to let it go brown. If it's gone brown, that's a failure. Uh -huh. That's And North American pizzas don't respect that. By the way, don't just do supermarket shredded cheese. Don't. You're gonna ruin <laughs> it. You're gonna ruin it. Just use the proper ingredients. That's nothing, there's nothing more important when you're making a proper pizza napoletana, then to actually use proper ingredients. Look at the way I've distributed it, okay? There's an evenness between the red and the white. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand that when they make a pizza, especially in North America, they'll just throw a bunch of shredded cheese on top of it, Yeah. and you can't see the red anymore. Right. It's supposed to look like the Italian flag. Oh, okay. okay? If you gotcha. can't see red and white and green, the green yeah. will come later, Yeah. then you failed. Now we're going to put it back in the oven for another 5-6 minutes. Don't go by time, go by cheese. You see the cheese melt, get a little bubbly, it's done. Yeah. Okay, there you go, there's one. Ooh. There's another. It's exactly where you want them to be. You'll notice there's no leoparding whatsoever. Right. Okay, we're going to fix that now. And how are we doing that? All right, first of all, olive oil. There you go. And a spiral all over the crust. All right. Everyone's going to crucify me for this. That's cheating! If it works, it works, who cares? No, it, I'm working with half the heat. I don't have a wood-fired 900 degrees oven. Mm -hmm. It won't It won't produce the leveraging any other way. Yeah. If you guys have another way, leave me a comment. But this is the best way I've found so far. Okay. Woo, let's do it. it. I don't consider it cheating. Call it cheating if you want to. And as for flavor, you're not taking a flavor hit. I will die on that hill. There you go. If you put every piece of basil neatly spaced out, it looks like a machine you made it, not pretty. Okay. okay it's gotta have a certain balance between randomness and intention. Okay. And that's how you make it beauty. So when you get a basil plant, you're often gonna get the tops that look like a little flower. Okay, yeah. There's four leaves like that, right? Put that right in the center. 
pick. Ah. And then put another flower, if I'm calling it a flower, put another yeah. flower somewhere on, else on the pizza. Okay. And then for the rest, then you randomly place leaves. Yeah. Okay? If you do that, then it'll be gorgeous. Okay? And do we care if they're facing upwards or downwards? Doesn't matter. Yeah, a few of them facing downwards makes it look kind of, it gives that impression of randomness as well. Yeah. So that's beautiful right there. This is all regulation result, not regulation way of getting there. Unlike a North American pizza, pizza napolitana is supposed to be floppy. Floppy? Yeah, it's supposed to, the tip of it's supposed to flop down. So not like the crunchy ones we used no, to get No, if it crunches when you cut it, you fail. For a proper pizza napolitana, it's supposed to be crunchy, soft, and floppy. Oh. Okay, let me show you how to properly fold it too. Fold it? Yeah. Meaning? This is supposed to be eaten folded. You take the slice. Yeah. And you'll notice it flops, right? Oh yeah. So you're supposed. Here's what you do. One option: you fold it in half, okay, and then you tuck the tip. Yeah. And then you eat it. Okay. That's one option. Yeah. The other option, okay, is if you want to be a little more pro about it, mm -hmm. roll it. Roll it from each side, like this. Oh wow. And then tuck the tip. Yeah. That's how you eat it. Here you go, my friend. Eat and enjoy. <laughs> great. There you go. So it's a fold it and then tuck. Yes, tuck the tip and then bite it. Mm. Excuse the mess, but holy shit, that's good. <laughs> Yay! Oh man. <laughs> Yay! So you can taste everything. Everything has its own unique flavors to it. Excellent. The basil is fresh as hell, of course. Yes. Oh, and the cheese is really good. Cheese, oh. tomato, the mm. bread. There's nothing wrong with the bread, right? Even though I did unconventionally. Tastes great. And it's, you're right, it's got that softness to it, but also the crunch from the flame. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. There you go, folks. Pizza Napolitana in casa. Senza forno speciale. Go ahead and make it yourself. There you go, guys. Hey, folks. This is Mochi. Mochi wants you to subscribe. Mochi also wants you to watch one of these videos. Please, do the right thing. Make Mochi happy and hit the subscribe button and watch these videos.